Hello everyone, Merry Christmas. I wanted to send out hopefully uh, what is the beginning of a few video blogs because we couldn't get together this month, but I still wanted to talk about, uh, at least briefly, this theme that we celebrate every winter, and that is entering God's rest. That's what we talk about and try to incorporate practically into our community life every December through February. And so I wanted to start uh, these, these brief teachings and exhortations on that theme and specifically how it relates to what should be the central theme of Christmas. And that, of course, is Jesus, but more narrowly, that God came to us, God's presence in the flesh, in the person of Jesus. That presence of God incarnate relates very specifically to entering God's rest. So it's, it's no coincidence um, that it, this happens during the winter, and neither is it a stretch. From the very beginning in Genesis, when God created a day of rest, the seventh day, that's because the first six days, he was, he was making the created order. Uh, but he didn't get exhausted and then needed a day of rest. Rather, the created order was the place that God was designing for his presence, like a temple. This is the same language used later for the tabernacle and the temple. That when God would take up residence in the tabernacle or temple, it, it was said that he was entering his rest. So the seventh day, the crown of creation, is God taking up residence in the created order that he created and designed for himself to dwell in. And so that's symbolized or it's embodied in the fact that he rested and then calls us to rest uh, in, in terms of the Old Testament on the same day. That's what, he, uh, that's what he required of his people. So presence and rest went very closely together. Same thing in Exodus when God is having to chastise his people for their disobedience and their resistance of him. Moses pleads with the Lord. He does not want to go or to be led up into the promised land merely by an angel. He, he, says if, he says to the Lord, if you don't go with us, then don't lead us up. And the Lord gives him favor, even though there would still be consequences. The Lord says, yes, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. So when Jesus, we learn, is God himself incarnate, and when the New Testament writers speak about this, they speak about this theme from the Old Testament of, of God's presence. You know, this is the terminology used in John chapter 1. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, or he pitched his tent, or he tabernacled among us. God was becoming present in his creation with, a, with an intensity and with an intimacy and with a specificity unlike ever before. God who was always present to his creation because of his omnipresence or who specifically was present in the temple or the tabernacle with the Shekinah, the manifest presence of God, that became intensified in the most intimate, personal possible way where God became one of us. And he can't get more present than that. And what this present God in the flesh did he lived his life among us with, with all of the temptations, with all of the limitations, with all of the weaknesses that any other human on earth would experience. God experienced in the person of Jesus. And then he died and shed his blood, again, out of his love for us in order to save us. You can't get more personal, present, or intimate than that. And in fact, the atonement of Jesus' blood, the salvation of our souls, does more than uh, rescue us from our sins, but it draws us near to God, which again has to do with his presence. So the Christmas theme, the central core of what that gospel message should be, is that God is the present saving God at his own expense, and that through his presence, we enter his rest. So practically speaking, let me just give you a couple of quick exhortations. Number one, remember that the present God uh, who came among us, that's the central theme of Christmas, and that proves to us 
uh, among other things, but it proves to us beyond a shadow of doubt that God loves us passionately and specifically. So I want to exhort you to, to be at ease in the love of God. Secondly, I want to exhort you the degree to which that you and I can emphasize God's presence in our lives through the Holy Spirit. Historically, that Jesus came among us, but now experientially through the Holy Spirit. The, the degree to which we emphasize that and relate to God personally in his presence, to that degree, we will experience his rest. So let's make this our, our, our meditation and our contemplation and our, our uh, reason for gratitude and worship during this Christmas season, that God came among us, his presence was among us, uh, to draw us to himself so that we could experience his presence. And then when we come to his presence and emphasize his presence, that is when we emphasize the fact that he's truly with us, among us and in us, we will enter his rest. God bless you guys. I hope to talk to you again really soon.